Okay, in looking at this question 81, we have a circle that has a center and it passes through a particular point. So anytime I get a question like this, I'm going to go ahead and graph this out. You know, I'm going to say, uh, you know, the, the center of the circle is 2 minus 3. That's about 2 minus 3, kind of somewhere here, 2 minus 3. And it passes through a point 5, 0. So kind of like somewhere there, okay? So if you were to kind of draw a circle, you know, to describe what this question is, is showing us, we kind of have something like this. So just bear with me, my circle is pretty ugly right now, but it looks kind of like that. So um, the question is asking us for the area of the circle. Well, the first thing you want to know is, what is the formula for the area of a circle? It's pi r squared. That's the formula for the area of a circle. In looking at this formula, the key thing to recognize is that the r is key. I mean, you need to solve for the r. You need to know the r, which is the radius of the circle, which, if you think about it, is just really the length from here to here. Okay, that's the radius of the circle. That's what you want. Now, some of you may be familiar with the equation of a distance formula, like the distance between two points. How do we find the distance between two points? I actually don't use the distance formula here. What I do instead is I draw a triangle. Watch this. I draw a triangle off of that line. Okay. A right triangle actually. I draw a right triangle off of that line because then I'm able to use Pythagoras theorem instead. Really the distance formula is really just a Pythagoras theorem. So if you know your stuff, it's just a visual representation of the distance formula. So but this is easier to remember for most students. So now watch what we do here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and figure out to find the distance of this line, I need to know the length of this side horizontal, horizontally and this distance of, and the length of this line vertically. So horizontally, I'm going to say I'm going technically from 2 all the way to 5. Now, why? Because I'm going to go left to right like this horizontally. This is like your x-axis and your y-axis. So when I'm thinking horizontal information, that's x-axis. So I pay attention to the x values. So from 2 to 5, I am going 3. That's a 3 distance. So I'm going to go up and down, do the same thing. If I'm going up and down to figure out this length here, this vertical line, I am going up and down. There's a y information. So that's y information. So I'm going from minus 3 all the way to... Um, zero right those are the y values so minus three to zero if you think about how long that is that is also three okay that's also three long for minus three to zero so if you were to draw this out you know just to make it a little larger you kind of have something like this yeah this is the radius we're after we're the red one the red line and the uh, blue line are the length of the sides right so this horizontal part is three this horizontal part is this vertical part is three now this brings in a concept of triangles 45 45 90 triangles what is a 45 45 90 triangle 45 45 90 triangles pretty much says that this side is uh if this side was x if this side was x and this side was x, this horizon, this um, hypotenuse <clears throat> would be x root 2. x root 2. It's just a standard rule anytime it's a 45, 45. Now, if you look at this question we have here, it never told us this was 45, 45. But the only right triangle that has two sides that are the same is a 45, 45, 90. Because it's 45, 45, which means the sides must be the same. And the rule always is, whatever these length of sides are, you're just going to put a root 2 with it. So in this example we have here, this length is 3, this length is 3. I automatically know this is 3 root 2. This is just one of those things you want to go into the GMAT knowing um, and not have to, you know, do Pythagoras theorem on this all the time. So you just want to know that for the 45, 45, 90 rule. So uh, because of that, if this is 3, this is 3, this would be 3 root 2. So because of that, I know this is 3 root 2. The length of that radius is 3 root 2. So now we're ready to finish up our question, which is pi r squared, which is the area of the circle. So this is going to be pi. What's the r? Well, the r is just this 3 root 2 we just discovered by using the 45, 45, 90 rule. The square is outside. Now, I'm going to pause here and kind of bring up something that students mess up a lot. If you look at this formula, it says r squared. A lot of people make the mistake of saying pi 3 root 2 and then just put a square. And they think, oh, you know, this is the r. I'm just putting a square beside it. But think of it. Think about it. This r, 3 root 2, is it's, it's what I call a two-piece item, meaning it's not just one number. It's, it's a combo. So you can just put a square there because if you do that, 
you're going to forget to square the 3. You're only going to square this root and you mess it up. You have to put a parenthesis around that because you're telling yourself this R, because it's a two-piece item, has to be squared and everything inside has to be squared. So that's how you want to do it. So if you do it that way, this square would apply to the 3 and also to the root. When it applies to the 3, it's a 9. When it applies to the root, the square would cancel the root and you'd get just, you just get a 2. So if you do that, obviously they will multiply. So that becomes 18 with the pi. And that's your answer. Your answer is 18 pi. And um, if you look at the answer key, that's an E. Okay. So lots of rules here, um, lots of concepts. It's You have to find the radius. You have to use um, the triangle concept here. Find the length, find the length and then use that to uh, find the hypotenuse, which is the radius of a circle, and then run it through the pi r squared formula. So the answer here is E.